Welcome to Shorty Supercoach. What's going on, guys? We're not far off now. What do we got? Yeah, geez, the best part of a week, less than a week, till uh, the real stuff starts. Round zero has started, so it's kind of started for us, but interesting to watch these games when they count for premiership points, but nothing for our Supercoach sides. It's a strange feeling. I'll talk about the defenders today, all the relevant defenders. I like to do these videos because it's hard to get to absolutely everyone, but in these videos, I like to talk about all the players who are in at least 3% a side. So I'll timestamp this one because it can be a bit lengthy. But yeah, not a deep dive, but just my two cents worth on a few players. I always think if they're in at least 3%, then somebody out there is thinking of them. So I thought I'll just touch base with them. Um, so I'll try and do this for each line. I thought this would be a good one to start with the defenders because Kitty Coleman going down last night few people saying shit what do we do with him i'm putting something up on my tiktok i did that this afternoon but here's my answer spoiler alert he's my guy i think 447 like it's awkward but you know mini little team reveal here here there he is he's in the back line d4 um, now, nah, honestly, I think if you if you don't have um, Williams, then I think you get him in. He wasn't amazing last night from a score point of view, but I definitely think the role is good. He'll be better for the run. Was on about 70 some stage in the late in the third quarter and just really slowed up. Um, so, yeah, I think he'll be good. Otherwise, yeah, there's not much between 250 and 400. So I think Yo's the play if you feel like taking a bit of a risk. Otherwise, yeah, you got to go all the way down to a rookie or try and get up to a Stewart or a Sheasel or Wangane Miller is probably another option sort of around the under 500 mark for you but a um, little story for you just this morning Saturday brekkie absolute stitch up shorties are in a prank mood today and we often go for brekkie down at Torquay on a Saturday morning and um, today it was just me and Caitlin um, and yeah had brekkie it was a good time we're leaving um, we're about 50 meters from the car and I don't know what came over me, but I just decided to sprint to the car. I was like, this will be funny. I'll just drive off on her. So I get in the car, drive, like I start driving off on her. She's still 20 meters behind. And I'm like, yeah, this is a good chance to stitch up. There's a few people around. I wind the window down. I'm like, I can't believe you kissed Michael. I can't believe it. <laughs> she's so embarrassed. And then this old lady, she tells me after the fact, this old lady comes up to her. She's like, oh my God, are you all right? Like, And she's like, yeah, yeah, he's just my friend. She's like... Oh, that doesn't seem like that's appropriate behavior and stuff. And I'm just like, whoa, fucking stitch up, bro. Oh, it was funny. She was embarrassed as. It was just, yeah, good stuff. you, you got to start your weekends with a prank from time to time. So good fun. It's going to be hot today, though. Man, I've got the uh, I've got a water bowl in the freezer right now, freezing that bad boy. I think I'm just going to make uh, YouTube videos, watch the cricket, watch the footy, and uh, sit in the air con. But... Yeah, let's start this, shall we? And like I said, if they're in 3%, I'm going to talk about them. So if you want to scroll through to a player that you've uh, been thinking about, feel free. But let's start with Nick Dacos. I don't have to spend much time on him, do I? He's a lock. There was some train of thought that, you know, he's expensive, rah, 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 a couple of months ago. But 70% certainly says he is as lockable as any. Generational player. Get him in the team. James Sicily. Now, he's probably one who's on the nose a little bit, and I understand it too. Hawthorne, as we know, decimated by injuries, particularly down back. So for me, that's got me saying Sicily may have to play a little bit more lockdown. He might not be able to just roll off and have as much freedom. He'll still score like I still see him averaging over 100, but I just would be happy to wait and see and just assess the impact because there's a chance he drops off a little bit and could be able to be picked up at a better price at some stage and when the Hawks maybe get some players back. Tom Stewart... Yeah, rock solid. I think he's a guy you can certainly rely on. Forget this midfield stuff. He's just going to roll around halfback doing as he pleases every single other year. He'll be a great option. You can definitely build your back line around him. And Luke Ryan, he just makes the cut in 3% of sides, and he's a perennially disrespected player. I don't know what it is. He had his best year last year with nearly 110 average. I think it'll probably drop back to the early 100s, high 90s. So he's a bit overs, but he's always disrespected from an ownership point of view. Very good player, reliable as hell, and, and could be more popular than he is, but for whatever reason, he ain't. <clears throat> Jack Sinclair, 4% of teams. 
It's a pass for me. I mean, he's still in doubt, as the little symbol suggests. He's in doubt for round one, even if he plays when you haven't had much preseason. I think it's a calf concern. I'm more than happy to pass on that because there's every chance of a re-injury, a slow start, and a chance to pick him up at a better price. You don't want to mess around with premiums with interrupted pre-seasons because if it all goes pear-shaped, you have egg on your face because you should have known. He could still come out and average 110 for the first six weeks, but if he doesn't, then we'll know why. 10% of sides is Dan Houston, and he's a nice little pod. Rolls in the midfield sometimes, skirts around halfback, finds those possessions really well. Not one that I've considered. He's a bit like Luke Ryan, a bit more popular, but one that always sort of gets overlooked, and, and I probably have again this year. Not one I'm interested in, but certainly a really solid option, and I can understand if you have him. Harry Sheasel. Huge fan. A bit like Dacos, this guy's just a generational player. I don't think it's too early to say that. He looks insanely good. He's just going to continue on, rolling half back, the occasional stint in the midfield, and North are playing a high-possession ball game um, style of footy. So, look, I honestly can see him lifting this average close to 110. I mean, I don't know if that's getting carried away, but at that price, I think he's unders. I think a lot of people are agreeing me with that sort of ownership. Get him into your team, I think. Jaden Short in the 3% of sides, old Uncle Shorty. I, I don't know about him. Um, look, he's going to be a, a good option. I'd be happy to pick him up in draft, but I just think he's about at his peak. I, I don't really see him being able to average much more than 100. We'll share a bit of that rebounding role with Rioli. He's a very much a, a kick-out, handball-receive type player does the very good things in terms of rebounding and using his um, kicking skills. Not a big intercept player, not a big intercept mark player, and I think that's what holds him back from being a guy who can average 110 because you look at like a Sisley or a Stewart, they'll do both. They'll rebound, their sides will go through them, and they intercept, where Jaden Short probably only does one part of that. Good option, but I don't think he's in the top eight defenders which I did my top eight defenders the other day, and I had, as you can see in the bottom left there, Carl Amon and Nick Martin, I think once they get dual position status, will become top eight mids, or defenders, I should say, top eight defenders, once they do switch over into that part of the ground. A um, couple of guys we can scroll past there with just the 1%. Hayden Young, 42% of sides, rightfully very popular. Last four, four or five last rounds last year, he averaged, I think it was nearly 150 5 to 110, something like that. Scored 4 out of 5 tons, playing that midfield role. He's trained in the midfield all preseason, looked very good in the pracky. Good price, just start him, I think. Definitely worthwhile. Lockie Whitfield just makes the cut with 3%. Again, had a ripper end of last year. Really caught fire just as the Giants did. I'm a bit too um, shy to pick him again. A bit scarred from old Lockie. Happy to pass on him. Great rebounder. Similar Jaden to... Jeez, we're struggling on the sentences here sometimes. Similar to Jaden Short. Probably just more of a run and gun. Can be sat on sometimes and can be shut down. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy to pass on him. I understand why some may pick him. I just think there's better options in and around that price than him. Um, and this is where we can start to sort of make our way through... Um, because not too many players in this mid-range that get the hype. But Nang <laughs> I'm in all sorts today. Nasaya Wanganin Miller is one who's caught a little bit of attention. And he's one of those categories where I feel like he could go from, you know, he's averaging nice numbers, good finish to last year. He could take it up another 10 or so points. And we could talk about him as a premium halfback flanker for many years to come. Last year, I was all about him, if you remember. I started him in my M6, was all about him, and he started the season pretty poorly. But then, he actually grew into what I thought he would be. Good finish to the year, and certainly without Sinclair, should start the year well. Um, it's just a question of whether you think he can go from that 85 average to 98, or is it 91 or 92? Because sometimes we see incremental breakouts, and sometimes we just see guys take that step to a superstar. So I'll be interested to see. He's not one that's entered my team at any stage over the preseason, but is a favourite of mine over the last 12 months. Um, who else have we got to discuss here? There's my boy, Elliot. Yo, already touched on him. Now, 
let's just call it how it is. The bloke's injury prone as hell, and he could go down in round three. Don't get me wrong, I know this. But we've got 40 trades. We've got plenty of opportunity to replace him if it goes pear-shaped. Now, the bloke is playing full-time mid. He's had a full preseason. How many times do we hear guys who have struggled to get on the park Round eight, they're flying, and they go, oh, yeah, he hasn't had a full preseason in six years. But he did this year, and he's flying. That is what could happen. And he may get injured in round seven or round nine or round 11. I don't expect him to play 22 games. But with 40 trades, if he can just get through the first six, he's going to be well over 500K, probably over 550K, and it'll be all said and done. We can just uh, trade him out if he does go out. Um I'm happy to roll the dice. I think he could definitely average in the high 90s. And I reckon I might start him. At this stage, something would really have to bob up unexpectedly. Otherwise, he's he's going to start in Shorty Supercoach. So, risky move, but I'm feeling a little risky this year with the buys and the trades. It's, it's a bit more um, down to fortune. So, I'm going to roll the dice, I reckon. I'm going to roll the dice. Christian Salem probably came into the discussion a little bit. Playing through the middle, um, I think he did start the game really well the other night. I think he ended up scoring high 90s, I think it was, maybe 106. I, I can't quite remember, but not one that I'm super enthused about. This would be another option to replace Coleman. Uh, look, I just don't think he has the ability to be a keeper. Um, so I think Yo could be a keeper. I don't really see Salem. I, I just... I don't know. There's something about it. I just don't feel like he will be a guy who averages in the high 90s. I don't know. He's done well previous years. I'm just not that excited about him. I don't know. I just There's something about it I just don't like. I don't love the potential output. I don't love the price. Something about me just... Something about it just says no. But there is an argument where he could have a really good year. Quainer in 3% of sides. That's a straight up no. I'm not sure why he's in... Uh, some sides and I think we'll scroll on to Coleman pretty soon there he is he's in 26% of sides at the moment but that will drop significantly probably all the way down to 1% should be zero I'd say but some people may not be checking their teams anymore <laughs> um, yeah looks like he'll be out for a significant period of time there was talk of ACL so I hope it's not that but he'll miss a fair bit of footy and, and won't play round one barring some sort of medical miracle um, so yeah, I think that'll be a lot of the weekend discussion, people trying to replace him. Josh Weddle in 3%, one of those hype guys. I just think he'll, I think he'll take a step up. Like it wouldn't surprise me to see his average boost up into the eighties. He'll make your money, but I just don't see him making enough cash. It's not like he's dirt cheap, 370, um, not dirt cheap. There's no guarantees that he explodes. I think it's just, he's a bit of a hype guy. I prefer some other young Hawks to Weddle. Will improve, no doubt, but I don't think he ticks the box for scoring output or money-making. Um, and then, yeah, we're really getting to that mid-price range. And like I said on my TikTok video, the reason you've got to consider Yo and maybe Salem is there is not much else below Coleman until you get to these rookie types of guys. I mean, we are just scrolling and scrolling through. Butterick in 4%, don't understand it. He's cheapish, but has never been a scorer. I mean, he's a lockdown type of defender and a good one at that. But I think all the rebound will go through Powell and Sexton and, and those types of guys. So it's a no from me. Um, and then, yeah, we're probably going to roll into Zach Williams pretty soon, who D'Ambrosio. So, look, I think... People think him and they think halfback flanker. I'm seeing and looking at his games during the prackies, I'm seeing more of a wingman. So could average solid numbers. He'll have some days where he gets caught on the wrong side and doesn't get much footy. I can understand why you would start him. He should make some money, but has historically been a player that looks really nice and does a lot of nice things, but for some reason gets dropped or delisted. So I don't know what's going on there, but I don't know if his job security is really cemented. And I don't know about the role. So there is a world where he does become a really good money maker. If you believe in him, go for your life. But I, I don't. I'm not on board with him. And look, Zach Williams is, is the clear option. 
Sometimes when I'm watching practice games or games that don't count like round zero, it's not so much about the score, but it's about the role. And Zach Williams' role was good. The score wasn't anything amazing, but the role was good. So lock him in your team. He'll be better for the run. I certainly think he should be. That that percentage ship, like that should go over 50 by the time we really bounce the ball for Richmond v. Carlton. And, and look, we're not going to talk rookies because the rookies are well covered. I will say Jace Bergwin, a really underrated rookie option, though. I think 2% of sides, I think he deserves more love. If he's named round one, he's one of those uh, defensive rookies that could actually score a lot better than Phillips, Reed, and Gibkiss. So one to... Um, keep in mind but yeah we're going to wrap it up there guys that is all the relevant defenders wrapped up with a bit of my two cents worth on them so yeah we'd love to hear your thoughts agree disagree someone i missed feel free to comment below but um yeah we'll start to pump out a few videos tiktok as well so yeah stay tuned guys cheers